Today I wanted to take a look at something a little more unusual in my software collection. This is the Star Trek font pack by Bitstream. At the height of Star Trek, Paramount had no problem releasing cash grab software that offered very little to consumers. Now when I saw this box at a thrift store, I was originally just curious because it's Star Trek fonts. But then I started to get a little more curious. How would the licensing for something like this work? What would I even be allowed to use my Star Trek fonts on? The back of the box is too busy trying to sell you on what fonts it has and doesn't really cover anything close to licensing. But it does at least acknowledge that Paramount is the rights holder for Star Trek. Now maybe inside the box it has some kind of notice about what you can use these fonts with, but my copy is sealed so I'm going to have to open it to be able to find out. Okay, so we get to know what fonts we have. We have a uh, brochure for other font packs, an offer for a pin that you mail to Bitstream, a Bitstream registration card, the actual software pack, Oh, a five and a quarter form for Bitstream. I wish I had the five and a quarter. That'd be cool. Well, let's see if perhaps the user guide here covers what you can use this with. Let's see, what can you make? That might have some answers. That just tells you how you can use it. Okay. So even in the back, it doesn't really give you an idea of what you are permitted to use these fonts with. Now there is a license agreement printed on the envelope for the floppy disk. However, this isn't a license for the fonts themselves. This is just for the contents of the floppy disk as it relates to a Bitstream Little Bits release. So this is just protecting Bitstream from you making copies of this floppy disk. Let's go ahead and open this up as well. So here is our font pack. Maybe there's a license agreement on the disc. Okay, let's see if we can find an actual license agreement on the floppy disk. Alright, we have a README, we have a parenthesized C bits dot apostrophe 92 file, that looks like it could potentially be a uh, license of some description. Alright, that file still does not contain a license for the fonts themselves. This is, again, just a license for the software contained on the floppy disk as it pertains to making copies. Let's take a look at the README. Still, nothing like a license for the fonts. But hey, while we're here, let's take a look at one of the fonts. That is certainly a Star Trek font. So I can't find a trace of a user license like would actually be required to be able to use these fonts. Now, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, let's take a look at your typical gargantuan font pack from the mid-90s. This particular release comes proudly displayed in a pack of 17 CDs. Now right on the back of this box, we see exactly what I'm talking about. After you look through all of the features that it has, we can see it is royalty-free use. Now this is backed up. If we look at the beginning of the massive image reference book, we'll flip in just a couple of pages. Anyone who buys this is given the free and clear to use the software for your own personal use or in your business or profession. So you're allowed to do whatever you would like with this. Okay, let's go back and take a look at the brochure for what fonts you can get from Bitstream. Now, we can see that the Star Trek font is in here, as well as the Flintstones, which is another intellectual property. 
And we can also see that there is a more generic type font pack, just the Bitstream true type font pack. And we can see here some of the types of fonts that it comes with under different categories, and it all seems well and good. Now let's take note of one particular font here, just at random, Geometric 706. So let's, let's just remember Geometric 706. Now, Bitstream has been embroiled in some controversy over how they have developed some of their fonts. Now let's take a closer look at Bitstream. Founded in 1981, Bitstream became popular after they released a library of classic fonts with unusual names. It is alleged that this library of fonts was created after Bitstream asked Linotype if they could digitize some of the fonts they owned. When Linotype refused, Bitstream went ahead but released the fonts under different names. This act offended some people so much that it was at one point called one of the worst instances of piracy in the history of type. Now there is even a list that compares the released Bitstream font names to the original Linotype font names. And the reason I made note of the Geometric 706 font was that if we do a little search here, we can find that one in this list. There is a long history of creating clone fonts, and we need not look any further than the infamous Helvetica to find more information on that, of which there was indeed a clone by Bitstream. Part of why people would want to clone a font is due to the cost. If we look at Helvetica, we can see that a license costs 400 US dollars. Now this can add up quickly. IBM previously used Helvetica, but opted to switch to a custom font after they decided they were tired of paying $1 million in annual licensing fees just for it. Now if we go back to the My Fonts page for Helvetica, we can see that there are several buying choices when you go to pick a font. Under the classic desktop license, you have barely any use cases that you can actually use the font with you have to opt for the $600 license to be able to do anything that's actually productive with the font. Now back to the font pack. We have the original series text, and it is available in this font pack. It is named Star Trek. However, font clones can't really use the same name because those are usually trademarked. And if we go back to myfonts.com, we can see that there is a clone of the Star Trek font available named Horizon by Bitstream. Now this isn't the only location you can find this font, but it is also credited towards Bitstream. Again, using the Horizon name. Interestingly, the font now costs $29 for just this one font, as opposed to the $17 for the font pack that would give you six separate fonts. Now, to really drive home the point about licensing, let's do a little demonstration here. I'm going to bring up the fonts that are loaded by the web page. I'm going to go to the web font interface on their website, and we can see it just downloaded a font file. Let's go ahead and open that font file, save it, and open it up, and we'll find I just downloaded the Horizon font from myfonts.com. Now that's because they are secure in letting you have access to these fonts, because all of the key to the font is in the licensing. The licenses cover different use cases for the fonts, and that would have been something that's fairly typical, because you never know what a font may be used for, and you need to cover all applications. So where does that leave the physical copy of the Star Trek font pack? Well, with no license in the box, I would say this is no better than saving the files you download from a font website. You're not authorized to use them, but you do still have a copy. But there is still nothing stopping me from installing these into my Windows computer, and doing what I want with them, including making a horrible 90s styled theme. Well, that's everything I have to say about the Star Trek font pack. I know this was a fairly unusual video for me, I just wanted to take a little bit of a break and make an easier video after I did the videos about the 98 machine upgrades and the uh, ATX power supply, both of which took multiple days to record. I've had this sitting on my shelf for a couple years now, and it's been bugging me because I've been curious about what's inside and am I authorized to use it and for all I know this could be a fully licensed Paramount product but I don't think it is. I've read some anecdotal remarks saying that there wasn't really any font copywriting in the 60s and 70s so it might have been totally legal for Bitstream to create a knockoff font of the Star Trek fonts. 
However, I don't know how they would have used the Star Trek name without getting the trademark release from Paramount. But that can't really be true, because Helvetica was created in, what, the 20s or 30s? And you have to license that still, so... There's something fishy going on here. It could be as simple as they just forgot to put a license in there. Who knows? If you know more about font licensing, I would appreciate a comment down below, because, you know, it's really hard to find information about this stuff without being in the know. Well, I hope some of you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll see you next time.